is the Vomer. Very thin, rudder-like, kind of reminds me of the keel of a boat or the rudder. And let's put it together with the sphenoid. So you can see it, it kind of, re it reminds me of the lily, that articulation there where it meets up with the sphenoid. So it's the underside of the beak. So remember the beak that the ethmoid sits on. This lily aspect of the vomer sits on the underside of the beak. see if I can get my hands out of the way. All right, so there's the beak, and the vomer sits on the underside of the beak. There's really no great way to show you that. There. Okay, so that's the articulation of the vomer with the sphenoid. Now, let's see if we can add the ethmoid into the mix. So we've got the ethmoid sitting on the beak of the sphenoid. And then we've got the vomer nestling there. So if we look at the lateral view, That's the lateral view. You can see where the ethmoid and the vomer, so that perpendicular plate of the ethmoid that we talked about in the very beginning, articulates with the vomer. And in between the ethmoid and the vomer is where the cartilage portion of the nasal septum is. So the ethmoid and the vomer form the bony portion of the nasal septum and then the cartilage sits in between where that space is and completes the cartilage portion. So that gives you a sense of the articulations between the ethmoid and the vomer and the sphenoid and you can have a pause the recording and take a minute to tune into the greater wings of the, your sphenoid making up the back of your orbits, and then midline, the beak of the sphenoid on that midline. So there you are looking at the back of the orbits. Follow that midline to the beak of the sphenoid. And then there, from there, you can run anteriorly to connect with the ethmoid. And on the underside of that, above the hard palate of the maxilla, is the vomer and play with resonating and feeling those three bones light up in response to your awareness. Last bone that we're going to talk about is the mandible. So let me put my mandible back on. And you can see the mandible articulates, as we know, with the temporal bone at the temporomandibular joint. So we have the condyle of the mandible articulates there. We also have an indirect articulation between maxilla and mandible through the teeth. And they certainly influence each other. Keep in mind at birth this bone is in two parts. So there is the um, suture where they came together right in the midline of the mandible. I believe it completes knitting together around age one. I'll double check my notes. If that's incorrect, I'll let you know in the notes below this video. Keep in mind, there's a lot that happens in that first year of life. An infant is typically learning to, they're learning to sit up, they're learning to crawl, and they may, <clears throat> excuse me, they may even have begun learning to walk by then. And with all of those gross motor skills comes the mistakes that happen on the way to learning. So the falls, the 
um, contact between the floor and the mandible, the coffee table and the mandible, and whatever else it encounters along the way. So the odds of a mandible knitting together symmetrically and it feeling the same left to right once again is pretty much slim to none. So you'll notice that how the mandible meets up with the left temporal compared to the right temporal, there can be two very different stories going on. Okay, so this concludes our tour of the cranium. There are 22 bones present in the cranium, and we looked at most of them in depth. We did not cover in particular detail the nasal bones or the lacrimal bones. One last thing I want to mention to you, we talked about the inferior nasal conchi, and you may be wondering if there's an inferior, is there also a superior? And yes, there is a middle and superior nasal conchi. They are part of the ethmoid bone, so they're not individual bones. Only the inferior nasal conchi are individual bones. Hope this was of help to you and gives you a better sense of what is underneath your hands when you are working and holding the cranium and even when you're not directly contacting it, being able to indirectly make connections with it. Look forward to seeing you in other videos. Thank you.